Um, another issue that uh, that I had is uh, one that I wanted to do personally at this time, you know, before I started, was education system reform. Um, we need to get more money spent in the classroom and less money spent on administrative waste. Um, our teachers deserve better pay. The best, easiest way we can do that is to be more efficient in, in how we spend the tax dollars and, and get it into the classrooms. Um, another item that, that I saw as a problem when, when my oldest son started high school and, and the local vocation director for the, for the local school systems uh, pointed out a problem many years ago when it started is the, uh, the Core 40 um, system that they have uh, in the high schools. Originally it was set up to be a, a guide for, for students that wanted to pursue uh, college as their choice, you know, take the, these, these Core 40 classes, it'll prepare you for college. Well, over, over time, what that had, it's had a very negative effect on the ability for any school in the area to offer business classes, vocation classes, it started to eat into kids' ability to take art classes, music classes, because to get the core 40 classes in their schedule, it, it's, it's bitten into their ability to, you know, to take any other type of background, you know, any other type of classes. Liberal arts. Uh, any, yeah, liberal arts, uh, you know, business, ag classes, uh, and now kids that are freshmen all have to pass core 40 to graduate. And, and so the impact on vocational opportunities for all those kids is going to get even worse. And we need to, we need to redirect the Department of Education to, to remove that core 40 requirement for graduation and allow kids, because about 30% of the students in this state are going to go on to college, about 30% of the jobs in the state of Indiana require four-year college, and that's leaving 70% of the kids uh, severely shortchanged on, on what I'll call life skill preparation. Uh, we need to do a better job of, of teaching kids uh, high-tech you know, careers, uh, you know, things that would be tied more into two-year vocational programs than strictly say it's a one-size-fits-all, everybody goes to four-year college or, or you know, what they're doing has no value. Um, we need to prepare everybody for some type of career. And preparing kids for careers is not just you know, four-year college, it's teaching them skills. If you advance the skill levels of, of students, you're, you're preparing them for, you know, for better earnings opportunity. Uh, uh, on the education uh, thing and talking about moving on to college, there's some statewide uh, talk about uh, uh, passing some kind of legislation for two years, two years of college mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. free. And I, I would not be against that if it leaves open the avenue for two-year associate's degrees for vocational technology uh, programs as well. I don't want that to be, it would be wrong to set that up as two years of a four-year college. Uh, we've already got enough kids falling that way. Um, getting a kid in a, into a two-year college, two years of a four-year college program, if it's not really what they want or, you know, what they need to be doing, we need to leave the, the opportunities open for, for kids to pursue Ivy Techs and ITTs and VUs and other, other techno, you know, technology uh, vocational, you know, direct programs as well. Then uh, you wanted to touch on uh, property taxes? Yep. Um, the property tax reform uh, proposals that went through the House and Senate this year was the first step of property tax reform. Uh, we can't stop there. Uh, there was issues that were really uh, not followed through completely in, in the past session. We need to stay committed to, to pushing those changes through and making them permanent. Um, right now there's, there's, there's a, a couple of states in the, in the northeast corner of Indiana that were exempted from the property tax reform. You know, I don't know how they let something like that slip through. What's good for one's good for all, and you really can't do a constitutional change that exempts two counties. So mm -hmm. I think that was probably done with the intention of bringing the whole bill back next session. And and if you change one one line of the bill, you're going to have to you know readdress the whole bill. Uh, that was probably done on purpose. But we need to stay committed to making property taxes less burdensome uh, for businesses and individuals. Uh, we don't want to. We don't want to go, go backwards on, on uh, proper tax issues and, and get back to where we were you know, three and four years ago. We need to make, make the fixes permanent, right, well thought out, and, 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 and finish the job. And apply each county. Yeah, and apply each county. Uh, yep. Uh, illegal immigration. Yeah, as I started uh, 
going out knocking on doors and talking to individuals the last six months. Um, obviously, high on everybody's list was property tax reform, uh, but probably mentioned just as often uh, what was dealing with Ill illegal immigration. And um, they tried to get a bill passed this past session. It had a lot of flaws to the bill. Um, but we need, if there's things we can do in state government in Indiana to deal with illegal immigration, we need to do it. And, and if you're an employer in Indiana, you should be required to hire only people that are here legally, period. I can't, I can't decide to move to Canada or Mexico or somewhere in Europe and, and, and not go through the proper um, paperwork to make myself legal and expect to be able to get a job in those countries. And we should expect and, and, and demand the same thing here. Uh, if the federal government doesn't want to deal with illegal immigrants that are here, and if there's things we can do to require businesses in Indiana to only hire people that are here legally, we need to do it. Mark, uh, we have uh, roughly a minute and a half Okay. Uh, for your closing comments. All right. Well, just a couple other items that were on the table this past session, government reform. We need to keep, we need to step, step that process forward too. Uh, I don't, not a full, big fan of the Kern and Shepherd bill, but if we can do reform that improves services, saves money, or both, we need to do it. If it fails on those tests, we need to, we need to evaluate each of those items closely. Uh, liability reform, I think we've got a lawsuit lottery mentality in this country that we need to address and, and, and get rid of frivolous lawsuits and because and, and, uh, those are all hidden taxes on, on everything we buy, everything we do. Um, for more information on my positions, on my background, I encourage uh, all the voters to, to check out my website, uh, markmesmer.com. should be easy to find when you Google that in. The, uh, that, that'll be the first site you hit. I've got a little more detail on all these issues and background, and, and uh, you can email me and contact me through that website as well. So, uh, if, and if folks have questions, feel free to call me at home or work anytime. Mark Mesmer. Uh candidate for Indiana State Representative, District 3. Uh, the election is Tuesday, May the 6th. Yep. Uh, be sure to go to the polls and vote. Okay, thank you, Paul. Mark, thank you for being here. You're welcome, guest. thank you. Mm -hmm.